Welcome to James Jackson Museum of African American History. We want to continue to present a history of African Americans in relationship to Muskegon. Today we have one of our elders who came, who migrated here and became one of our citizens. He's going to tell you his life, his experiences, and hope you can profit from it. Mr. Williams, uh, to my left and further to my right is Dr. Uh, Dr. Willie Burrell. Sometimes my mind doesn't mm -hmm. operate. And we're going to start with Mr. Williams, and the first thing I'm going to ask him is tell me about why you came to Muskegon in 1949. Mm -hmm. Okay, what made you want to come up here? Okay, uh, I heard about how good work was in the state of Michigan. And uh, so when down that part of the country, things used to get very slow in work line from July and August and like that. And then I found out you could work on the harvest. So other words, I came up here and worked on the harvest. And I kept with every day, I let up here in a place called, a borough of Travel City called Southern Bay. And I uh, get a paper every day. And uh watch for the ads of jobs. Well, I come to find out most of all the places was on strike and whatnot. So, in other words, it was a bad year that year. And so, I returned back to Arkansas because I know work picked up in September. Well, I want to ask you, why did you start and why did you leave your home to come here? Okay, well, that was the beginning of it. See, why I left my home to come here, uh, I hear from different people who would come up in this part of the country. They, most of them had a job making much better salary than I was making. So I feel that I should be able to make some of that too. This was in 1949. Yeah, that was 49. But that year, it was bad here. So, in other words, I returned, the last August, I returned back to the state of Arkansas. How were you treated uh, in Arkansas? And, uh, yes, how were you treated in Arkansas? Well, uh, for work concern, some of the jobs, they was, some of them were very hard jobs. And a lot of the jobs, you could get along pretty good, but you, your salary was so low. You only could make somewhere between the range of five to seven dollars per day. And so in other words, uh, I come to find out people was making that in such a short a time in that. So that's why I made a decision. Could and, you let's go ahead. And another thing too my father-in-law, he lived up at White Cloud. Okay, my wife, she used to like to come visit them. And so, in other words, we come up to their place, and then I would search for jobs. But in 49, it wasn't. Go on, keep going. Yeah. So then, in uh, 50, in 50, I didn't come to Michigan. 51, I came back to Michigan. And that's when I had made a decision when I came back to Michigan to find a job. And uh, I didn't have no certain city that's anywhere I could find a job. So Muskegon paid better than a lot of the places over the state. I didn't want to live in Detroit. I heard too much about Detroit.
uh, did you ever work on a white folks farm down there um, to help make a living for yourself or the, or the WPA or well, what was the survival well, I, mechanism? Well, I was for? raised up on the farm. Uh, I guess I was one of the best farmers that was for my age because I had people all the way from, I would say, uh, 20 years old to 80 some years old was well experienced farmers. We could, we used to raise real good crops and things, but it just really wasn't no money there. We made, we had plenty to eat, but no money. And that don't work out. You got to have both both. Now, when you came up here, how, how did you come up? Well, when I came up here, this year, last time in 51, uh, I had a nice car, and uh, a lot of more guys wanted to come to Michigan to work. See, our plan was we come and work in the harvest and make some money, and then we go job hunting. So that's what we did. I came up here, I had a nice car. And uh, I don't see no more of them around, but anyway, that's what I had. And it was a truck, a uh, guy had a truck out of Blah Block and so. It was probably, I don't know how many, 15, it's probably anywhere from 15 to 20 people on the truck. And two or three cars with the truck. That's how you came up? Yeah. Was the streets paved when you came here? Was it what? Streets paved, or was well, it dirt and sand? Well, when I came to Muskegon, most of the streets was brick street. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's right. Brick tell street. me about uh, living homes and and uh, the atmosphere in Muskegon. Okay, that that part was very. Uh, come to find out, jobs were good and easy to get. But if you had black skin, you just couldn't get nowhere to stay. That was the part. You know, it, it was some, some houses that had three, four, and five different families jammed up in one house. And you just, uh, places to get to stay, it was just too hard. You couldn't find them because there wasn't enough people to rent to you. Was the rent high? Well, no, not really. Back at that time, no. It, it was sort of set according to what you were making, you know. But it, it, it's not, it wasn't stretched out like it is now, though. Did you find much discrimination when you came here? Yeah, it was worse than down south where I came from. <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> Yeah, it was really, really war. Because uh, when I was living at my home, uh, we never really had no problem, the mountain or nothing. But when I come to Muskegon, I found all kinds of prejudices. I didn't eat some of them I didn't even know nothing about. Well, name them for Okay, such as uh, if you, uh, like you want to go buy a car or something, you know. You come to find out they charge you more for the car, you know, if you had black skin. I'm telling you, just like it is, I wouldn't tell nothing wrong. That's the way it was. And other words, uh, uh, I, let's see, mostly, most of all the black people came to Muskie and they worked in the foundry. Well, that was about the only type of job you could get because they wouldn't hire you in these other places. No, they wasn't. <clears throat> now you take CWC, Lake Foundry, West Michigan Steel, Clover Foundry, all of them, they almost never worked there with black people. See? But when they get out past that, you wouldn't get hired. You see a, a few guys working on different jobs around. <clears throat> it's just like a guy live up there by me. Uh, years ago, he was about the first person, I guess, worked 
for the city block. Tomo. Yeah. But them kind of jobs, we didn't, couldn't get them. Well, how about uh, uh, buying a house? Oh, that was a problem. If you, <laughs> if you uh, found somebody would sell you a house, well, you better believe it was, it, it was a house sitting there looking like a house, but it was uh, roach den, rat den, and whatever, you know. And at that time, you could buy a house uh, anywhere from like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12,000. Yeah. But the thing about it is, you other would. Wasn't too many people going to sell you a house. Because if you were the black family and was able to buy a house on a block, well, then all the white jump up and move. In other words, if the white people, that wouldn't, they had the houses and they wouldn't sell you it. Mm -mm. That was just the way the rent was. They wouldn't rent to you. You really didn't have the money to pay anyway, did you? Huh? Well, what I mean, yeah, because at the time, uh, you know, after you get here and go to work, well, if you uh, shift it a little bit, you're going to save you some money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you could, I could have bought a lot of houses, but no, they wouldn't. And, and you could uh, uh, go ask, you know, uh, say, uh, see a sign for rent. Half the guys wouldn't even talk to you. Uh, if you ask them about a rent apartment, no, I don't want to rent no apartment. You know, all such This problems. is in 1950. Uh, well, that was a little after 1950. 1951. Yeah, going on, coming on down through the 50s. Hmm. Yeah. Well, tell me about uh, the the stores and the theaters and, mm -hmm. and and going and buying and how did they treat you? Well, some like going to a theater where. I never really went to what what one. It used to be one right up there on the corner of Suckham. I think that was, I forget the name of it. But anyway, uh, it was a jewelry store right up on the front on Western Street. And it was sitting in between Clay, where the bus tunnel was there. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the only one I went to. I went to one down by Bishop Furniture down there on the corner to see a couple of films. But you really didn't have no problem now. See, why you run into problems is getting a place to stay and working conditions. That's why you run into problems. Well, what about your kids? Did they, um, how did they survive in school and get into school and back and forth like that? Well, uh, my oldest child was a boy, okay. Now he was going to federal school, and as kids will do, and when school was let out, he, in other words, I had them bought a house on Jackson Hill in 308 Jackson. And the principal said he was running through other folks' yard. And we went, <laughs> we went down to the school, and uh, he, he sent a note by him to come for uh, the parents, you know, that child to come to school. We went down there. And the principal named Nobob. I never forget that. And he was talking about different things. And he spoke to me in a word like this. He said, well, uh, freedom just don't all come at once. This is the word she spoke to me. Yeah. And I asked him, what did he mean? Well, you couldn't expect full freedom. I told him, I said, oh, wait a minute. Now, you talking about something that is a hundred and some years old? Why you think I've been all these years? You know, that's what I asked him. He wouldn't say no more. He didn't want to talk to me no more. How did uh, other people treat you? Uh, how did one other white folks treat you? Well, most of them was nice. 
you you'd have problems on your job. When I was working at uh, Lincoln Foundry, okay, it was certain department they didn't want you to work in. So what did you do? Well, see, the union finally uh, got rid of that. You know, because the other way they carried that on through the war, World War Two, and uh, it was some kind of act if you strike, you know. You could be charged with a charge against you. How did black people treat you when you first came up? Well, them what was here, they they was selfish to themselves. So every group mostly come in, uh, they associated together. You know, that's the way that was. In other words, there was a lot of discrimination among us. Yeah, what, uh, yeah. Them what had them what had been here. They would, uh, with own problem stuff, they would, uh, they were still under the act of, it, it like it was still World War II. Yeah. All this old kind of stuff, if they rent you a place, you sleep, <laughs> you sleep the night, next person got the same room, he sleep the day. That was called a hot bed. Well, whatever kind of bed it was, yeah. And it was just like a, a most of them places where we could get to stay. You talking about a dump? That was they was a dump. Yeah. So black people exploited you, along with the white folks. Yeah, if he's here and had a toehold show. Uh, tell me, how about transportation being getting on the trolley? They had a trolley here. Then? Well, we had city, city buses. There were city buses in. Was there discrimination on them? No, I didn't find no problem with them. They traveled from downtown to the Heights and whatnot. Oh, uh, how about grocery stores and uh, uh, barber shops? Well, if you were black, you went to a black barber. If you were white, you went to a white barber. Because, see, they were discriminating in that. You, in other words, you couldn't walk in a white barber shop and get a haircut. How were the police? Well, that was one of the best things here. Was the police? They were kind. <laughs> but, and... Yeah, we didn't have, we didn't give them no problem. And they didn't give us no problem. Did you think this was a uh, a step up from coming uh, south, coming from the south? Well, just for the salary I was making, that that was the only different thing. That was the only thing kept me here, because I really enjoyed down south where I were. If I could have been earning the same amount of pay that I were here, you didn't say where you came from. Blaville, Arkansas. All right. Along the Mississippi. That's other words. It run other words. I ranged from. Uh, 75 North coming out of Memphis, or either going back to Memphis. But I was 75 miles into Memphis. And I was raised up just below Blyville, a little place called John Arkansas, which is no more. So when you came here, you were able to save money, enough to buy a house. Yeah. And did you go back home after the 50s? No more than to visit. To visit. Mm -hmm. But you didn't want to stay. But well, see, my main goal was, I know that if I saved enough money to go back home and buy me 40 acres of land, I had it made. See. But when I got, got that kind of money, because see, land, that, that type of land through that part of the country, at that time sold for $1,000 an acre. But you could find it every once in a while to buy. But that's what it cost you. A water hole, a ditch bank, or whatever. That's what it cost you. Tell me, what was, when you came here in the 50s, what was the city like? The surrounding area, uh, were uh, there are blacks in Muskegon and Muskegon Heights? Yeah. And Norton Shores didn't 
wasn't uh, uh, we can say it wasn't founded then. Huh? <laughs> no. Uh, then. Well, see, one thing about it, uh, uh, a lot of people live in the hike. I understood they probably eat because places were short. A lot of them used to go and if he'd buy a lot, he'd uh, dig them out of basement, you know, put his basement in. Now, see, that's one thing that had a lot of trouble with a lot of people. If he got his basement in and put a top on it, he'd move in it. And it was against Senator Orders to do that, you know. But the places were just, you know, so short, they weren't so hard on them, you know. But uh, you had to continue to work on that house, though. Yeah. Now, when you all would go shopping, you know, sometimes like you go to the banks, you might be the first one there mm -hmm. uh, in line. Where they well, you didn't have it. no problem with that. You know, there, you there wasn't one thing wrong with the bank. You could put all the money you want in there, but they weren't going to let you have no. Well, you, well, I mean, if the people were standing in line, would they pick the white people before they... No, would? no, no, they oh, wouldn't yeah. do that. No. No. No, they didn't do that. Uh, okay, now, was, was Muskegon, North Muskegon, there present when you were here? Had it developed? Yeah, most of it had. Most of it had, especially along the lake. Uh -huh. You know, but I didn't have no reason to go out there. All right, now you lived in Muskegon when you uh, came here. Mm -hmm. Did you live down what they call the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it got a park over there now on Uber Street. Right up as you come down the hill by the farmer's market. Yes. Yeah. Right through there, that's the bottom they be talking about. And so were mainly black uh, uh, people well, living there? Well, it was mostly up on Yuba Street were white people. Because Reverend Buckley uh, was, was, at that time, he was down on the corner of Marquette, let's see, Marquette and Ottawa, in a big house. Can you think what that is now? Yeah. Yeah, as you see, Mark Wett run, uh, run cream cross back, like it's going to go out in the lake, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, Reverend Buck was right there in the corner. Where the, that's where the people went to New Hope Church. And he, he uh, so many people went, he was trying to get him a church. And other words, uh, he finally got the money together and he bought uh, this church up there on Yuba Street, New Hope Baptist Church. Did you go to church? No, because I worked all the time. And on a Sunday for recreation, if I was off on a Sunday, well, I'd take my wife after she came up here and we used to walk down on the lake, you know, around the lake, down there, yeah. So, in uh, other words, it, 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 in some instances it was good, in some instances it, anybody could have had it. Well, tell me the good and tell me the bad. Okay. It's just like, for instance, we were talking about the bank a few minutes ago. Okay. I want to buy me a, a pickup truck, a GMC pickup truck. And uh, I had over enough in Hackler Bank to pay for this truck. And so, in other words, the guy said, well, you pay some money down and get the rest by that. But see, <laughs> uh, he, turned it, he turned it into Hackler Bank, but they wouldn't finance it, you know. Then after I got the truck, it was a, a man, a white man down south, giving me recommendation. You know, he said, "Well, let, let him have it." That's what he told the salesman. You know, and uh, so it wound up. I bought the truck. It's true, but you know how I got it? I had to pay for it cash out of my pocket. In other words, is uh, at that time you could buy a brand new three-quarter ton 
pickup for eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> That's what it cost you. That was in the fifties, huh? Uh -huh. Early fifties. Yeah. That's you could buy a brand new one for that. Rent I know because I bought one. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you feel when you uh, first came up here, or you were up here, that you could go any place around in the area? You talked about walking along the the uh, the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Could would anyone? Were you prohibited in certain areas? You couldn't go. No, not that way. Uh -huh. So no. you could take your car and drive all around the area. Yeah, you could. You wouldn't have no problem going up and down the street and whatnot like that. Wasn't a problem. What about the restaurants? Well, I really didn't go to them. But what was it about them? Could you have gone and, and sat in the same areas as the white people? Well, they, in other words, I got the news where I went there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go. Because you couldn't sit with them? No. Um, so you felt your experience coming up here, you felt it was worthwhile? Yeah, with what I, what I, with what I earned, sure, you know, yeah. And, and did, were all your, ch uh, you, were your other two children born here? Yeah. Yeah, each one of them five years apart. So you, you kind of enjoyed coming to Muskegon then, huh? Well, for job concern, earning a living, yeah. But you will, you rather have been down south. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get out the money. That's mean I used to work all of my hours. So well, I get it someday. And I did get it, and then when I went home, you know what had happened? What? They had studied up an idea, you know, just like you plant your cotton and whatnot, and they come out with a. <laughs> A poison to kill, uh, you know, other words, to kill the leaves on the cotton. Yeah. Because they use the cotton picker machine. Mm -hmm. See, but well, then that part in the area. See, that was the only reason I didn't go buy the farm then. That, that, see, other words, they had they had to put on these you know, artistic wells, you know, ever so far apart. And people right down there the day, they pay water bill in the country just like you pay it in. Because they poured in the country with that. Because see, for that machine to pick the crop clean, other words, they spray the cotton, and then the leaves fall off, and then the machine would pick it clear. So that they ruined. Uh Trying to make a high profit, they ruin your your sense of living. Yeah. Yeah. See what they was trying to do. They was trying to save after the machines come out. They was trying to save the labor price. Let's talk because you worked at what Camels, Lakeys. Well, I worked at Lakeys first. first. Uh -huh. What was the years. attitude? Uh, 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 Towards you at Lakey's, and especially towards us, we can think, think well, in terms of African Americans. Uh, depends on, in a way, who you were. If you was the easygoing guy, people used to push you over you, you know, just make you do unnecessary things. But by, we had a, a union president at the time named Jeff Hare, and it was always uh, problems that he would have about the workers and everything. Was he they, black? Yeah, Jeff Hale. And uh, so, other words, by, if we hadn't had a union, I just don't know what, but the union made the difference. How? Because you had somebody speak up for you. If they, they always, a lot of a lot of them had a problem if you didn't do just what he wanted you to do. You was fired. Mm -hmm. You know, kick you out. Nobody speak for you. This is like a new master, huh? Uh -huh. But in a different area. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and he tricked you too if you didn't understand. 
Mm. Yeah, that's the way they had a world. Now, your mom and dad um, and uh, your biological family, your um, sisters and brothers, were they all born down there where you were? Mm -hmm. in the south? Yeah. Your mom and dad. What did your dad do for a living down there? Well, my dad always, he, he, could, he could do a little anything. He could, uh, he was a mechanic, but what he really was a sawman at a sawmill. Yeah. He was a lumberman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But my mother and dad separated to when I was seven years old. Oh. And I was mostly advised by older people around, especially my mother's brother. That's who I always would follow around. Did you get to go to school there? Mm -hmm. You could go to school. You had your own school. It was the worst looking building in town, but you could go to school. And in certain areas, you could finish 12th grade. What was the elementary like in kindergarten and like that? And the schoolhouse, was it a one-room school place or two rooms? Well, and that, it was, the population was so heavy that you couldn't have one room. You had to have a lot of room. Uh, they used to, uh, most of the schools were built, they built a long building, and they used to build, in order to cut the rooms off, they'd have these folding doors. See, the other words, like this hand with hanging, you can when you keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, until you, other words, you could go from one room to the other one. That's the way they was cut off inside. Yeah. Huh? Tell me, uh, could you vote at that time? Well, you always could vote in the state of Arkansas if you paid your poll tax, which you could be fined for if you didn't pay it. What was the poll tax? A dollar. A dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you couldn't pay poll tax, you couldn't vote, what else couldn't you do? Uh -huh. What else couldn't you do if you didn't pay poll tax besides not, uh, besides voting? Well, nothing. You just wouldn't be, couldn't, just couldn't vote, that's all. So he you paid your poll tax, they didn't prevent you from voting? No, you didn't have that problem. You know, it's a funny thing, I was raised in the state of Arkansas, but I never really knowed until I was up here in a grown man that you couldn't vote in the state of Mississippi, because then nobody never talked about that. They kind of evaded it like it wasn't there, huh? Uh-huh. And I was looking, I listened on TV uh, after this time slavery was over, uh, where all states were supposed to turn into something like an application, no more slavery in the state and whatnot. And after 147 years, Mississippi hadn't even turned theirs then. Now, that's saying that you just come out last week. Did you ever go to Mississippi? Yeah, I went to Mississippi. Did you ever have any trouble in Mississippi? No, because I was working on a big White House truck, and uh, didn't nobody bother them people. Did, did you see people living better in Arkansas than Mississippi? Well, they live better in Arkansas than they did in Mississippi. Because, they, see, the Mississippi is a whole lot of poor land. And in Arkansas, we had that rich Red land. Red sun, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only place that was out the west part of of Arkansas, born in Oklahoma, that's where you run in the bad parts of the land in Arkansas. But you never saw a, a, a black folk being beat by white folks or beating each other or anything? No, but you know, every once in a while people, they have a problem or something like that. But it would, you know, soon be uh, worked out. Uh, tell me this. When you were in the South, what was the role of the preacher to the community, the black preacher? Well, some of them was pretty good. Some of them was pretty good, but some of them, he, all he wanted to go down, 
preaching is the same old psalm that every other Sunday. And, and that, you didn't learn nothing from that. So he wasn't very much help that way. Okay, now you came up here. What was the difference in the preachers up here? I found the same thing. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. uh, you had certain communities you could only live in up here, mm -hmm. and that uh, you felt you were being exploited both by black people and white people. Yeah, uh, that's what you seem to see. I see that more when you first come here. But after you come in, you know, you uh, be making a living, get along all right. Well, you you don't you just them what's like that. You just didn't pay on no mind. You go ahead. How did your wife like it when she came up here? Well, she liked it pretty good because she's at home with the baby. And you are, you you could make a good living and yeah. take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me this. Mm -hmm. Tell me the good things came out of you coming here and the bad things that came out of you coming here. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of uh, uh, tell us? Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh. Uh, one thing, maybe by when I left Arkansas, if I hadn't had the plans of coming back, it wouldn't have seemed so bad, you know. But I feel, see, other words, work, work him. It uh, like when I got hired in, everything was up to 99, 100 percent, you know. But then after then, work went and go down on you, be out of a job, you know. You don't know which holly, which way to go, or what not. So that that part was bad, you know. But uh, after all, if you use the level of head, you could survive okay. All right. Well, what what was some of the good things that you uh, felt? Uh, that was different from where you came from. Well, it was. I had. I felt I had a better chance, you know, because I could earn more, you know, from my work and everything. And uh, which, but I, I, I still say I believe if I hadn't left home with the attitude that I'm gonna earn enough to come back and buy this spot of land and whatnot, you know, and live good, but you know. That's the way I felt about it. But sometimes I wonder, was it really worth all the problems? In other words, you, you felt you could have stayed in the South and done pretty good? Well, no. No? No, because my earning wasn't high enough. See, that's the thing. Just like for instance, okay, the best you could make at the, most of the job, okay, some some few guys, because I had a cousin, he could make fifty or sixty dollars a week, but he was a plaster, you know, plaster house, you know, stove yeah. coat and whatnot. And but just on there, let's just speak about the on there, man. You could make something like twenty eight, thirty dollars a week. And it was your salary. But you couldn't live on it? Yeah, because you had to live on it. Doesn't mean you wanted to do better. <laughs> yeah. You just made it. Yeah, you just could get by. But you couldn't accumulate any wealth. No. Huh? Mm -hmm. Did you experience a lot of prejudice here when you came um, that the uh, white people that came from down through the south prejudiced the black people here against black uh, the ones that was coming because I've heard people say <clears throat> that they did well yeah that's true 
That is true. They said that when it would come here from the South, uh, the white people that would come here from the South would prejudice the, uh, black people against the, um, against each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. They would take sides with the white people. Yeah, it was all that kind of stuff was going on. <laughs> but but after you live around such as that, then you, you know you. I guess you, I don't know how you would say this. I guess you get immune to it. <laughs> You put your finger in your ear, you don't want to hear it, you're going to do what you're going to do. Um, when, when did uh, you see this area begin to start growing? Well, for the hikes, for building, whatnot, it was on the bill when I come here. The hike was... The people in the hike was trying hard. Mostly it wasn't no building downtown. Mostly all the houses downtown was already built and everything. And while you run into a problem downtown, I know, uh, I hate to say the word, the N word, but it's a house over there about three blocks behind where I live right now. In other words, I then got Rid of this house I had in, in the city, and I went out here off a white road, and I bought a four-acre farm out there. And I was coming in to work one particular evening, even Dr. Howe. Okay, they, somebody, these people bought this house up there where the farm, fire barn now, right now, a door or two from it. On Lockwood, before you cross the bridge, you know, going over to the college side, mm -hmm. and they had them took a spray can and wrote all on the house, selling to in, you know, all on the house. Sell it to in nigger. Oh, <laughs> yeah, um, don't sell it, it to them. Huh? Well, that's what they had wrote on the house. To whoever owned the house that sold it to black people. Oh. Uh, tell me this, when did you, uh, did you ever feel a part of the, the uh, area, in other words, did you ever feel comfortable up here, when, once you came up here, like you had done in the South? Well, it was a long time. It was a long time because everything you go to do was always different from there. You know, and I mean, it wouldn't have been the same, same, you know, it would probably have been the same there if I had to come from some other place there. But see, I was where I was raised up at. And I pretty well know everybody from young people to old people. And I always tried to be intelligent around people. I didn't have no problem with nobody. That gave you a sense of community. Yeah. Huh? That, that's what that was. Can you think of the worst thing that was done to you when you came up here? <laughs> if you can talk about it. Well, I can talk about it. The worst thing I ever run into was when I came here, no place fit to live in. Or uh, every time, any place you went to was a dump. I remember I had a, a rental apartment down here on Ottawa Street. 555 Ottawa, I'll never forget it. And uh, this, <laughs> this here, I uh, went in there and the hole knocked all in the wall. Well, see, the regular city dump, it used to be in one of them points on the lake, see, down here, right off of Ottawa. And they used to, uh, Pittsburgh used to, truck used to come out there and they dump, uh, uh, Paint. Paint. That's a lot of different stuff you could use, you know. And so I went, other words, now I'm paying uh, $13 a week for the, for the little apartment, you know. I went and fixed the apartment up nice and everything. <laughs> and his later name is Bradley. I never forget it. He got to come knock on the door and <laughs> he said, 
No, she wasn't. No, what it was, like, she wasn't. She wasn't at home when I went to pay her. She come down to the house because she know I pay her. Now. And she come down and knocked on and said, come in. She come in and said, oh, what's going to happen here? I done got me some uh, plaster and fixed the holes and all that. Had it all decorated and painted it up. And then when, <laughs> when she said, well, I tell you, next, next week it's really going to be $15. Ooh. <laughs> Just get you fixed up your own house. Yeah. Her house. Yeah. She's going to charge you. Yeah, she did do that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Did you move out? No, I stayed there till I went up and bought a house down with Jackson here. No, I didn't move out. <laughs> but every time you moved in, most of you had to fix it or something. So who was your renter? Was they Caucasian people or black people? This one was a black woman. A black woman doing you like that? Yeah. Okay. And she uh, she didn't only have that. She had every building she could get her hands on, you know, uh, on the, her contract, you know. She, and she rent to us, you know, different one of us. She was a good capitalist, huh? Well, I don't know what she was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. Well, now you're 83 years old, mm -hmm. and you look around, and what has all this change mean to you, or do you see a lot of change? Well, I see a whole lot of change. I've uh, lived to see a black president. That means so much to me. And just a lot of more different things. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. used to go walk into a grocery store. It wasn't no black girls checking out and stuff like that. There you go. No, I don't see what it is. Look, it's been a, it's just a world of change. It just needed so much to change and need to have till you can't see what's done have. <laughs> yeah. You never believed it like it was, huh? No, you can't believe that. A lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, did, were you around when they had um, uh, the civil rights movement was was uh, was active in Muskegon? Yes. Uh, uh, what do you think about that? Well, it needed somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, other boy, this other boy now. Uh, I don't want to go too far into it, but see when. Dr. Howe, Dr. Jackson, who else all joined in together, things began to change. Because it really, it really was a problem. Mm -hmm. How do you see, how did you see things changing? Well, uh, you could see something happening that you hadn't seen before. Can you give me an example? Well, just like I mean, if you, you uh, different people went to get jobs that never could have, would have had a job at these different places and whatnot, just so on so far. Did you ever participate in that with them, or you were busy working and you didn't, um, just didn't have the opportunity? Well, I tell you what I did. I, I. Didn't too much do too much into that, but uh, see now I was listening at uh, Martin Luther King. He tell the people you can march with him and everything, except but no violence. Mm -hmm. And see, uh, it's just like a guy with some boys down there on Western Street way back, and uh, they was protesting, and the man kicked him. Well, see, now, I, ain't, I don't want you to kick me. I ain't going to kick you, and don't you kick me. So I just stay away from there. That's the way that goes. Okay. Well, I'm going to respect you, but I don't want you kicking me, hitting me for nothing. That's right. Yeah. So he tell you to stay away, and I wasn't hard-headed. I stayed away. Let me ask you this. Do you like being black? Yeah. Why? Because I'm black. 
<laughs> All right, I think <laughs> this has been excellent because uh, what you have in your head will never be on book. Mm -hmm. And so we want to put it in this museum so people can get the thoughts and ideas of some of the past. Mm -hmm. Because we always feel uh, if we know the past, we don't make the same errors over again. Mm -hmm. And we got to know the past of our people, which is in our land. Mm -hmm. And the young people know that this didn't just open up and here we are. Mm -hmm. That the struggles of people like you came here, worked hard, and had faith in yourself, mm -hmm. in, in, in your surrounding community. And we, th we thank you very much for coming because you're going to be in this museum mm -hmm. and, and it's not like being in a funeral home. <laughs> it's even not like being in a church. It's the people's um, place that mm -hmm. can come in and, and see what's happening, mm -hmm. think about it, and give them some thoughts to go on. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. You're welcome.